So my research is on what we call the antecedents of work design. And what that essentially means is trying to understand where work design comes from. So there's a whole lot of research that tells us how important good work design is. And, and this is work where people have autonomy and they have variety um, and they have uh, a say in what happens in their job and in their organization. And they have things like social support. The thing is though, when we look across the world and how work is designed in different countries, we find that there's a lot of really poor work design. So work that you might think of as sort of boring or monotonous or where people don't have a lot of variety, they don't have a lot of social support or a lot of input into what happens in their job and in their organisations. So this research on the antecedents of work design is trying to understand what factors either enable or constrain the emergence of good, well-designed work. So, so far, research on this topic has told us a couple of things. Firstly, more or less, people kind of have this innate tendency to want to reduce uncertainty and risk by designing this, this really poor work or these really sort of monotonous jobs and organisations and teams with lots of hierarchy and lots of bureaucracy. We also know that people who have some sort of formal training or experience in work design, perhaps organisational psychologists, tend to design better work. So they tend to give people more autonomy or they tend to make less hierarchical uh, team or organisation structures. But what we're kind of beginning to unpack a little bit more and what I've found so far is that it's often not people with expertise in work design that are making decisions that affect work design. It's often people who are making decisions in their role, maybe as sort of a department manager or the leader of an organization. And they're making that those decisions based on their training and their expertise in their field and their professional background. So what my research is trying to understand is how these people in the day-to-day -day realities of organizational life make decisions about work design. So specifically, I'm looking at how cognitive biases, individual values, and also occupational culture or your professional background might shape how you design work or your attitudes to work design. Also looking at how culture shapes work design. So when I make decisions about work design for someone else, do I rely on stereotypes or kind of an ideal prototype of who that person is and what they value and what they need at work? So to do this, I'm conducting in-depth case studies uh, at organisations where there has been a redesign of work. So I've been coming in both before, uh, during and after the redesign to collect lots of different types of data to speak to people who have been involved in the decision making process or who have been affected by it, whose work has been redesigned. Uh, looking through documents and also surveys and lots of different types of information to build a picture of why the redesign unfolded the way it did, why those particular decisions were made, what the outcome was, what the new design is, and how effective that is over time. In conducting these case studies, what we're able to do is to pull all this different information together and to then feed that back to these organisations and to give them a picture of the, this redesign process what were the factors that maybe got in the way of designing a more efficient outcome, of designing a more efficient team or program or organization, so that we can open that conversation with them to achieve better work design. So to really compare the knowledge that we have in research and the wealth of research on work design with the realities of designing work in practice and the the day-to-day -day perhaps barriers that managers or executives or that policymakers face in designing work where people are more engaged and where people have a say and have work that has variety and support.